Yes, Canaanites, you read that title right. The Prophet of Truth's plan has finally been revealed. While I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure many others will not, thanks in no small part to my vagueness. But rest assured, you won't be in the dark for long. Before we dive into the subject of today's video, however, do note that we'll be talking about information revealed in the recently released Halo Divine Wind. This information isn't plot-centric, so we won't be touching on the core story or spoiling anything. Still, I wanted to give you all a fair heads up. With that, let's dive in. To discuss the importance of this latest revelation, to understand why Knowing Truth's plan is such a big deal, we need to go back to the days of Halo 2 and 3. In Halo 2, we're formally introduced to the Covenant leadership, the three hierarchs, High Prophets of the Covenant, Truth, Mercy, and Regret. As the game progresses, we see that these Prophets are schemers, though Truth more so than the others. Eventually, he is the only remaining Hierarch, at which point he assigns the activation of the Halo Array to Tartarus, Chieftain of the Brutes, then departs for what at the time was meant to be the Ark. This Truth is a schemer, but he has an elegance to him. You can tell he's mad for, and later with, power, but you can see he's able to maintain a facade of respectability and grace, at least most of the time. Then we get to Halo 3. Suddenly Truth is an open megalomaniac, stark raving mad, and oddly suddenly seems to know that the Halo Array simply kills life, that it doesn't provide transcendence. Nowhere in Halo 2 was it ever indicated that Truth knew the, well, truth about the Halo Rings, Yet, suddenly he's talking about escaping Halo's fire. I opened the portal to this hallowed place, this shelter from Halo's fire. In Only adding to the confusion was 2007's Halo Contact Harvest, which revealed the real reasons behind the Human Covenant War, or War of Annihilation as the Covenant called it. The three future hierarchs, Truth, Mercy, and Regret, accidentally discovered that their entire religion was based on a lie, that humans, not San Shayum, were the true inheritors of the Forerunner legacy. To cover this up, they blackmailed their way into power and declared war on humanity. From these sources, we knew that the Prophet of Truth knew that humans were the destined successors of the Forerunners, but not whether he knew the truth about the Halo Array. If he knew about how the Halos actually operated, then why would he send Tartarus to Installation 05 to initiate the Great Journey? Wouldn't he be afraid of getting caught in the Ring's blast and killed? And if he didn't know the truth, why did this Hierarch flee from Installation 05? Why didn't he stick around to watch the Consecration of the Icon, as Urtas refers to it? In addition, how does the changing of the Guard, the replacement of Sanghili with Jiro Hanai, play into Truth's plan? Further complicating things is the fickle nature of Halo lore back in those days. In the books from the very start, slipspace travel was depicted as taking a noticeably long time. However, in the games, it's often depicted as instantaneous or near-instantaneous, especially in Halo 2. Halo 2 makes it seem like Truth instantly went from the space near High Charity in the Coolest system to the space above Earth. However, later lore, primarily from the comic Halo Uprising and Halo 3 ODST, show that Truth's trip took several days and he didn't jump straight to Earth right away, entering the Soul System near Jupiter and continuing at relativistic speeds for a while. All of this together left fans with a ton of information to sort through, but information full of holes. A few weeks ago, a video just like this would have been a theorycraft video, merely speculating on Truth's motives. Within the last year, especially after the release of the Halo 2 storyboards a while back, I began to re-examine Truth's motives and what his plan might have been. I wondered if he knew the truth about the rings all along, and his plan was to escape their fire by hiding away at the Ark. And it seems that something like that might have indeed been the case. Halo Divine Wind features among its cast a prelate, an augmented San Shayum or Prophet warrior. However, the short story Halo Shadows of Intent by Joseph Staten was the first book to feature a prelate. In that book, we first learn of a flotilla of San Shayum that had escaped the fall of High Charity, now somewhere out in the galaxy. Halo Divine Wind gives us more details on this flotilla, along with a glimpse at Truth's intentions. From all of this, we can start to see through the madness and assemble the Prophet's true plan. After discovering the truth about the Halo Rings, the High Prophet of Truth and his fellow Hierarchs declared war against humanity to cover up everything. However, Truth had higher ambitions, one that would leave him the sole ruler of the Covenant, and eventually, the Universe. As asserted by Divine Wind, Truth remained a sincere believer to the end. 
His assertion that he shall become a god always seemed sincere and not just because he was in front of the Arbiter. He didn't seem to be playing things up. Whatever the case, while Truth was a believer, his belief was in a twisted version of the Covenant's promise. The rings would wipe the galaxy clean, leaving whomever survived to rule over a new galaxy. And the Prophet of Truth had no interest in sharing that power. For years, he planned a coup against the Sangheili, secretly empowering Gerald Hanai across the Empire with the help of Tartarus, Truth's appointed chieftain of the Gerald Hanai, a title meant to give additional weight to Tartarus' authority. When the Prophet of Mercy was killed, an act made possible by the interference of Truth, If you had not withdrawn our phantoms, Are you questioning my decision? It presented the perfect opportunity to start the final phase of Truth's plan. With the far more loyal, or more accurately gullible, Gerald Hanai now guarding the Covenant leadership, Truth could soon make his final move, the move that would leave him as the single ruler of the Covenant. First, Truth and Mercy send their recently forged Sangheili Arbiter to retrieve Installation 05's Activation Index. He is successful, and as soon as he is, Tartarus appears to snatch it away, beginning the Great Schism. The Sangheili are cast down, the Gerald Hanai slaughtering them, and, notably, their High Counselors. The ruling class of the Covenant would now be purely San Shayum, no longer sharing their power with the honorable and intelligent Sanghili. As soon as an opportunity had presented itself, you can bet that Truth would have had Mercy killed off, but luckily, from Truth's perspective at least, the Flood took care of that little detail. By the end of Halo 2, Truth's authority is unchallenged, which might explain the more open megalomania we see in Halo 3. Without a need to perform as the wise, gentle prophet before his fellow hierarchs or the Sangheili, Truth just lets himself go mad with power. After handing the activation index to Tartarus to initiate the Great Journey, Truth departs high charity aboard the Anodyne Spirit, the forerunner key ship the Covenant referred to as the Dreadnought, heading for the Ark. As he does, the flotilla of San Shayum mentioned earlier also depart, the confusion caused by the launching of the Dreadnought, the flood invasion of high charity, and the Great Schism, creating the optimal diversion for this flotilla to leave unnoticed. From there, they would head to a place called the Cloister, implied to be a shield world, and await the fires of Halo. After the old galaxy was burned away, the San Shayum would, to quote the book, remake the galaxy in their image. So, it seems that the Prophet of Truth's plan was to activate the rings, but to do so from the Ark, from safety. Afterwards, he would emerge as the one ruler of all that remained, likely planning to use his San Shayum to rule the newly reborn galaxy. We can't say much about the specifics of Truth's post-array plans, whether he would have tried to use the Ark to manufacture followers loyal to him on a genetic level or something, but those details are less important. While Truth's descent into raving madness in Halo 3 is still quite lamentable, this new information at least gives us a clearer idea of his motives and plans, and his state of mind. Still, a few questions linger. One of the biggest questions remaining has to do with Truth assigning Tartarus to light Installation 05. We've established at this point that Truth did believe in the promise of the Sacred Rings, but a twisted version of it. So, why allow Tartarus to attempt to light the Halos? While Halos can be fired individually, a process known as a Tactical Pulse, A Tactical Pulse will completely eradicate the local infestation. We have no indication that Truth was attempting that, or even knew about it. Instead, he just sends Tartarus off as though he fully expects the rings to be activated. With what we know now, I believe Truth was intent on Tartarus failing, wanting to get rid of such a powerful figure, one that might rival his own influence in the galaxy to come. It reminds me a lot of the situation surrounding Imperial Admiral Zaitan Jar Watanri, a Sanghili Admiral who had grown so influential that he presented a threat to the hierarchs. As they couldn't just execute him or disappear the Admiral, he was assigned to patrol the fringes of Covenant space, where his influence was no longer a threat. I can imagine Truth having similar concerns with Tartarus. Speculating further, it's noted by Urtas Varum that the control room for Halo was where the Covenant's High Counselors would watch the start of the Great Journey. Perhaps Truth had Tartarus engage in this ruse to lure in any surviving Counselors, be those Sanghili or maybe some San Shayum that weren't on board with Truth's plan, and there were some. Any that did arrive would be cut down by Tartarus and his brutes. Now, as a quick alternative, one could also imagine that Truth did expect to transcend, but, thinking not every believer would ascend, had some of his San Shayum remain behind to govern the galaxy that would come. In Halo 3, Truth remarks about humans, 
quote, being left behind, a reference to the original plan for humans and forerunners to be the same species, a topic I definitely need to tackle at some point. Anyway, this line, while having its clear intended meaning, could also reflect Truth's own plans to ascend and leave the galaxy in the hands of the other San Shayum. Perhaps they would eventually pass down tales of the Halos, beginning another cycle of searching for the Sacred Rings and activating them once more. That seems far less likely to me, but I had to at least mention it. And there we have it. Finally, some real insight into what the Prophet of Truth was planning and what his endgame was. He may have believed in a warped version of the Great Journey and Divine Transcendence, but he did seem to genuinely believe in something. While we still need a little more insight to properly close this case, it's great to finally get some new info. But even more than the insight, this flotilla of Sanchayum is an incredibly potent seed for future stories. I want to meet this flotilla, find out what they believe and think in a post-war galaxy. I'd love if they met the Usan Sanghili and fellow prophet Zoreskin from Halo Broken Circle. I can imagine that would be a very interesting meeting. Or maybe we could see a follow-up to Halo Shadow of Intent, which ended with Urtas Varum planning to hunt down the flotilla while understanding that not all San Shayum were bad. Maybe the flotilla is now headed back to Janjir Kwom, the San Shayum homeworld, a world alleged to have been destroyed. Maybe that was a cover-up as it's been implied to be, and the former prophets have business there for some reason. There's a lot of fertile ground for this story to grow in. But whatever happens, I'm happy at the moment that we finally got this more than decades long issue finally addressed, at least to a significant degree. So, now it's everyone else's turn. What did you think of this revelation? What questions do you have that still linger? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, or maybe jump over to Discord and join the discussion there. Whatever you choose, thank you for watching. Stick around for the Patreon shoutout, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. First, I'd like to give a big thank you to our Horospice patrons. First, there's Hope. Then we have Freight. Discombobulated Sycophant. Justin Montgomery. Ada Frame. Man in the Dark. Keisha Dila. Daddy Anarchy. Great Scott Productions. And finally, Jumpy Sucks Balls. Thank you all for your amazing support of the channel. Next, I'd like to thank our theoretical patrons. If you'd like to see your name here or get a direct shout out, check out patreon.com slash halo cannon. You can simply support the channel or get additional benefits such as behind the scenes materials, including raw audio for upcoming videos, or even shout outs like this. All patrons now get early access to certain videos as well, and more benefits are to come. However, your continued viewership is more than enough for me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. If you really enjoy this, turn on that notification bell so you can be among the first to see new videos when they release. But for all my fellow Canaanites, keep on being awesome.